Ladies and gentlemen, this is an article that came out in The Age, October 16th, 2018. How can you call us monkeys? Kenyans say Chinese bring racism. And I was looking at several other articles that came out on the same subject matter. And, and they're complaining that all of these Chinese people are coming there. But not only are they bringing racism, they're bringing all kinds of discriminatory practices into Kenya. And these people are angry. They're like, you're treating us um, like this in our own country. You know, we all saw the video of that one Chinese man that Kenya actually quickly deported out of there that was calling their president a monkey and the people that he worked around and said they stunk and all this other nonsense. So that was just one out of many stories going on. All right, so now this is a story of this man, Richard Ochin, 26 years old at his home in Nairobi. All right, so he is saying that, um, you know, before last year, before all these Chinese people came in, he could not recall experiencing racism firsthand. Not while growing up as an orphan in his village near Lake Victoria, where everybody was, like him, Black. Not while studying at a university in another part of Kenya. Not until his job search led him to re, I think that's Ryuvu. Okay, I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing that right. A fast growing settlement at the edge of the capital of Nairobi. And this is where he found work at a Chinese motorcycle company. Um, I'm sorry about that. Let me get rid of that. Okay. Come on. All right. There we go. Sorry about that. Anyway, um, so he got a job at a Chinese motorcycle company there in Kenya. But his new boss, a Chinese man, his own age, started calling him a monkey. So he started calling this man right here a monkey, this Chinese man. It happened when the two were on a sales trip and spotted a troop of baboons on a roadside, he said. And so the Chinese man said, your brothers, he said, his boss exclaimed, that's ignorant. And he said, share some bananas with the primates. You know, what's amazing is these folks have DNA of monkeys. And they're saying this to black people that don't have one ounce of primate DNA in us. <laughs> and you don't have to be a black person in Africa. It doesn't matter where you are. We don't have any primate. Humiliated and outrage. Ochien decided to record one of his boss's rants, catching him, declaring that Kenyans were like a monkey people. This coming from the people that have the monkey DNA. I don't know why all of you hybrids keep doing that, but whatever. After his phone video circulated widely last month, Kenyan authorities swiftly deported the boss back to China. Good. But you need to round more of them up, Kenya, especially if this is a major problem there now because of these Chinese people. Instead of a tidy resolution, however, the episode has resonated with a growing anxiety in Kenya and set off a broader debate. 
as the country embraces China's expanding presence in the region, many Kenyans wonder whether the nation has unwittingly welcomed an influx of powerful foreigners who are shaping the country's future while bringing racist attitudes with them. Wow. It is a wrenching question for the nation and one that many Kenyans, especially younger ones, did not expect to be confronting in the 21st century. And you really should not have to. You know, those Chinese people, y'all need to run them out of there. Okay, screw their money. You've made it all this time without their money. You don't need it now. Kenya may have been a British colony, and that's why you hear all the English there in Kenya, where white supremacy reigned and Black people were forced to wear identification documents around their necks. Are you freaking kidding me? Oh my God. But it's been an independent nation since 1963 with a sense of pride that it is among the region's most stakeable democracies. Today, many young Kenyans say that racism is a phenomena that largely uh, know indirect through history lessons and foreign news, but episodes involving discriminatory behavior by the region's growing Chinese workforce have unsettled many Kenyans, particularly at a time when the government seeks closer ties with China. Maybe you shouldn't. <laughs> Seriously, maybe you shouldn't be seeking that. You know, or your government, uh, government just make it clear that these Chinese people, you let them know before they come in your nation if they come with those attitudes, you will kick them out, get them out of there. But something definitely needs to be done. You know, I heard about these discriminatory practices even last year. And as you could see, it's still going strong in Kenya. There are the ones with the capital. But as much as we want their money, we don't want them to treat us like we are not human in our own country. Exactly. Says David Kenyua, 30, who manages an industrial park in Ru, uh, Rui Ru. That is his home, um, to that's home to several Chinese companies uh, including the motorcycle company uh, where Ocean works. Over the last decade, China has lent money and erected um, infrastructure on a sweeping scale across Africa. To pay for such projects, many African nations have borrowed from China or relied on natural resources like oil reserves. And when tallying the costs, African nations have generally focused on their rising debt, which you should not have. You have the resources. There should be no debt that you owe China at all. Occasionally on an exploitative uh, labor practices of some Chinese firms. Okay, so you're discriminating, you're practicing racism, you're exploiting these people. Oh man, this makes my blood boil just reading that. But here in Nairobi, concerns about racism and discrimination are a growing part of the conversation about China's expanding presence. In Nairobi, workers in their 20s and 30s swap stories of racism or discrimination they have witnessed. One described catching a Chinese manager slapping her Kenyan colleague, who was also a woman, for a minor mistake. Oh, hell no. 
Oh, hell. Mm -mm. When they strike you, you strike them back even harder. No, you, you, y'all don't let them Chinese people put their hands on you. Oh, hell no. Don't take the racism either, but don't let them put their hands on you. Oh, no. Mm -mm. When they strike in your women, <laughs> it should be mobs there taking care of something like that. Other Kenyan workers explained how their office bathrooms were separated by race. One for Chinese employees and the other for Kenyans. What the hell? Are you kidding me? Oh my God. Yet another Kenyan worker described how a Chinese manager directed his Kenyan employees to unclog a urinal of cigarette buds, even though only Chinese employees dared smoke inside. Well, yeah, you know, China, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, China is the heaviest country that uses the, uh, tobacco in the world. They use more tobacco than Americans. So I can believe that, you know, a lot of heavy smokers in China. The Chinese population in Kenya is difficult to count accurately, although one research group put the figure around 40,000. Well, y'all still outnumber 40,000 Chinese people. I mean, let's face it, y'all do. Many are here for just a few years to work for one of hundreds of Chinese companies. Many of the employees uh, live together in large housing developments and are bused back and forth from work, leaving little social interactions with Kenyans. So they're over there practicing their form of Jim Crow. You know, they're trying to bring back colonialism, but see, now Kenyans should be able to push back hard on this. You know, I'm sorry. I wouldn't want Chinese money that damn bad. I, I, I'll Let me struggle. At least if I struggle, I'm going to have peace of mind. That's the way I see it. But this, ladies and gentlemen, this should not be happening. This should not be happening in on a black continent at all. This should not be happening, not in 2018. No, no. What's going to have to happen is Kenyan attitudes are going to have to change. I'm sorry. It, it, you're going to have to take a more, I don't give a damn about these Chinese people and care more about your own. But them putting their hands on you, telling you to clean up after their nasty cigarette smoking and uh -uh, calling you monkeys and pointing at baboons, talking about those are your brothers. Uh-uh, y'all should not be tolerating any of that mess. Mm -mm. I'm sorry. We know you know, we will always have cultural differences, but them bringing that to your nation, that should be unacceptable. That should be unacceptable. Accusations of discrimination have emerged on a major sponsored project, a 482 kilometer Chinese built railroad between Nairobi and Mombasa. The train has become a national symbol of both progress and Chinese Kenyan cooperation. Though positive reviews uh, have 
at times been overshadowed by concerns over its $4 billion price tag. Wow. But in July, the Standard, a Kenyan newspaper, published a report describing an atmosphere of neo-colonialism for Kenyan railway workers under Chinese management. No, no. See, they're, they're doing, they're coming in there trying to do the same thing that the white colonialists do. Chinese people at the top, everybody else down at the bottom. Y'all got to stop that from happening. You know, these folks have ran the entire planet like a plantation. And at this point, they don't know how to do it any other way, or they don't want to do it any other way. But just like here in America, this whole country is ran like a plantation. Okay. Wow. Some have been subjected to demeaning punishment, it said, while Kenyan engineers have been prevented from driving the train except when journalists are present. So they're only allowing Chinese people to drive these trains in Kenya. But whenever press comes in there to write about their railway in Kenya, they throw a bunch of black people on, black Kenyans on as, um, I guess the people driving as engineers. Again, they are mimicking the things that we have seen white people do. Wow. It was a particularly explosive claim because during the train's maiden's voyage, the president of Kenya was actually on board of this train and two Kenyan women drove the train to much fanfare. So they let two Kenyan women drive the train, but of course, when nobody's around, the Chinese people do it and won't let anybody else do it or hire them as engineers. That's ridiculous. Again, pulling the same stunts that we have seen done here in America. In interviews with the New York Times, several current and former locomotive drivers agreed that only Chinese drivers got to operate the train, describing a range of racist behavior. With uniforms on, you don't look like monkeys anymore. <laughs> he recalls his Chinese supervisor saying this to him. That is sick. That is sick. Wow. His Chinese supervisor told him with a uniform on, he did not look like a monkey anymore. Y'all need to slap the shit out of him. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. Wow. Y'all, I just don't know what to say. But I just hope the Kenyans wake up and, you know, your politicians, unfortunately, even if they have this information, they're not going to do nothing because for them, it's all about the money. But the people are going to have to be the ones to change the climate over in Kenya. It's going to take the people to rise up against us and refuse to live under colonialism part two. Okay, no. Mm -mm. You know, the Chinese are there to try to force you guys to go backwards again. And you really can't afford to let that happen. 
I don't give a damn about what money they're giving you. You guys got the resources. You got what they want. Let China, they can do business with you without being in Kenya. Plain and simple. What, y'all don't have people that don't know how to build roads? <laughs> Who built the roads before the Chinese people came? Oh boy, I hate looking at this kind of stuff. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell. And I will see you on the next video. Peace, family.